H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So what I did here is uh, in order to take, uh, in order to talk about what is an import basically. So what I did is I, I've created a package here as import. And let's say I'm going to create a class here, a uh, new uh, class and uh, difference. So I just want to say difference. Okay. So in this class, I want to basically do some functionality. Uh, let's talk about those functionalities. Uh, or let's say this is again some kind of uh, mathematical calculation. Okay, so let me rename this, rename this to mathematical calculation. It's a very big name. Okay, so copy this and paste it here. Okay. Now, as the the uh, the class uh, tells it tells you that it is kind you can do some kind of mathematical calculation here. Okay, so let me do something like public void add, and wherein you want to add two values in a, in b. Okay, and let's say you just want to return this, and uh, instead of void, I'll be just telling here as integer, and just say return a plus b. Right. The same thing goes if I want to subtract two values, I can just say uh, subtract and I want to subtract a minus b. And very well from your main class, uh, sorry, from your main uh, method, what I can do is I can just say mathematical calculation mc equals to new mathematical calculation. Okay, and I can just say mc mc dot uh, subtract, right? So I know I have to hold this vari variable somewhere, otherwise it is of no use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say sys out, and with the help of my system dot out dot println, I'm going to print that value because when I'm invoking this particular method, it is going to give me a return type, and this is my return type for me. Okay, and the same thing goes for your addition also. So pretty plain and simple, uh, right click run as Java application. So it gives me the result here, right? So if I do a subtraction or an, uh, or an addition here, if I say add, so I get an addition here, run as Java application, right? Pretty plain and simple. And if you, you know that if this is your uh, uh, static method, right? What you can do is instead of creating an instance of the class is uh, yeah instance of the class you can directly invoke this with the help of your class name itself okay so this is how you know that you can uh, directly invoke this but this one you cannot directly invoke because this is a instance uh, this this you can only invoke after creating an instance of that particular class okay now uh, uh, the main objective of telling you all the story is uh, if you remember, we have already created a calculation class somewhere in a previous session, wherein we are doing some sort of addition and subtraction in those things, right? Why to again reinvent the wheel, right? So what I can do is I can basically use these class, right? So in order to use these class, what I need to do, I need to use this particular class. So if I comment these things, right? I do not want any kind of functionality which is present in here mathematical calculation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the help of a different class here. So in order to take the help of a different class, I can just say uh, calculation. Let's see, go and see if you have any constructor. Okay, you don't have any constructor here. So I'll just say calculation calc equals to new calculation. 
right? So, but still, what I'm getting, I'm just getting a compile time error here, saying that this particular calculation is nowhere present in in any of the packages here, right? So, if you see here, if you remember in your previous examples, if you if I open this calculation here, right? So if uh, in this particular package itself, if I right click and say new class and say client program and here if I say calculation calc equals to new calculation, here I have no problems at all. Okay, I think calculation has got a... Uh, okay, so here it says the construct add argument to match okay i just add two values here right is this what it is this calculation goes here okay we've got a constructor with taking two two values here right so what i can do basically uh, if you see here uh, when i'm invoking this particular calculation here i do not have to have anything as import here right because both uh, client program and the calculation belong to the same package here right now let's see uh, go back to our mathematical calculation here and if you see here uh, we are getting some issues here right so even though i say uh, 12 comma 10 right i still get some issues the same constructor i have used in the i just copied this i can just even copy this and paste it here right now, how do I use, okay, now if you see, I just copied it, uh, something happened here, that means in this particular class, as these two belong to different packages, right, different packages in the sense, if I click on this, if you see the package structure is com h 2 infosys java dot imports, and this is your, uh, if I open any of the file here, if I open this one, it is something like com h 2 java dot methods, so methods and your imports are of different packages here now in order to use my in order to use the calculation class from a different package you basically need to import that package okay so that is what your import is we will see a lot of imports uh, down the line uh, when we talk about a lot of other other things okay so from here onwards we have started in uh, started uh, learning what is an import here okay now if you can see if i remove this import right now it is going to give me a compile time error again saying that calculation cannot be resolved to a type. It doesn't know where calculation is because calculation is not at all visible to this particular class. All right. So for that reason, you basically do an import here. So I just remove this import. Now, once I import this, what I can do, I can just invoke any of the methods present in here. Uh, add value. Let's say this is your add value, right? So what is this add value? It is going to return you. So I'm just going to hold this in systrace. Okay. So I'm just going to say here uh, three and four. Plain and simple. So right click, uh, run as Java application. So I get the get the same result what I am expecting, but I'm not implementing in the same class here. Instead, I am pushing it to a different class and that class is giving me all the functionalities. All right. So instead of having uh, all the functionalities implemented here, you are basically implementing it in some other class and you are just using that class here. All right. Now, Oh, we will talk about this math class later. Okay. Now, uh, and as you know, if you have any of the static methods here, so let's say you, you have got a static method here. So directly you can access the method with the help of the class name here, right? So I can just say copy this one or say sys out. This dot sub value. Okay, so I'll just say four and five. So this is going to give me a subtraction of both the numbers. Right click, run as application. Okay, 
So this is what your import is. From now on, uh, we will see what is an import, how to use an import. Uh, when we talk about uh, different classes, uh, there are different classes in different uh, different packages. We have to import those packages. Okay. Now, coming on, coming going back to the previous classes, if you see from where your system is coming in picture, right? Now, I have never, imp uh, as in this particular mathematical calculation, I'm using a calculation as a class. For that reason, I have to import it because it is not even present in the same package here. Now, the question arises from where the system class comes in picture. System by itself is a class again, right? So, you, this is your public final class, all right? Now, in this, as this is a system class, so there is no trace and we know that it is not even under your import package, right? So, where from where it is coming up, right? Now, there are a lot of classes which are accessible to each and every class okay and that everything which comes under your java.lang package okay this is important to understand anything which comes under your java.lang package is automatically being imported for each and every class to use it all right what if i say import java.lang.systems right it doesn't make any difference here even though if i say this or if i don't say that okay so there is no point in importing these kind of packages. So right click, run as Java application, right? I'm getting the same result. I'm getting the output with the help of, uh, help of your system.output.println, okay? So there are a lot of other classes which are present. If I'll show you here, uh, let me open the JRE, RT, lot of other, other, other packages which are already present. But out of these packages, only uh, java.lang package is the one which is install uh, which is imported automatically where is java.lang ab okay this is java x dot where is pqr okay here we go all right so this is if you see there are a lot of other classes which is present inside your java.lang everything will be automatically imported to a to your own class okay any questions on this No questions? Great. All right. Now, uh, based on this, uh, we'll see our next topic. Okay. So we are going to talk about your uh, access modifiers in Java. What is an access modifier? Uh, how do we use that? In uh, how, why do you use that? When we talk about uh, the the core concepts of Java, one we have already spoken about uh, the polymorphism, right? We have spoken about inheritance. Uh, now we are going to talk about encapsulation. Okay. Now, how do you do your encapsulation basically? Right. So let us start up the course here. So for that reason, let me right click new package. So I'm going to talk about uh, access modifiers. Finish. Right. So in this package, uh, I'm going to create uh, two packages, right? So right click new uh, package. Let me say this as a pack one. And I'll be creating one more package as pack two. New package. Okay, so let's go to the navigator. You will see it properly. If I go to the navigator, you can see under your access modifier, there are two packages, package one and package two. Okay, now what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to create uh, the respective classes in uh, package one and package two. And uh, the way right now, if you see uh, in the example, what we saw, uh, your, we, we are able to access your calculation and inside your calculation, there are a couple of methods. I'm able to access those methods here, right? So let us start uh, with the same example kind of here. I'll be having in the package one, I'll be having a method as calculation, sorry, a class as calculation in the package one. So how did the Java Lang class imported when you did not define the import statement in, in the class? 
E, okay, there's a question. Uh, how did the Java Lang class imported? Yeah, that's a default functionality. What happens before even your class gets loaded, right? So uh, your uh, virtual machine it loads those classes, and by default, your Java dot Lang package is available for your class. Okay, that is the functionality of your Java. Okay, it it is only for your Java dot Lang package. Any other package, if you want to use any other package, you have to import them explicitly. Okay, so this is again kind of an interview question. What is the default package which gets loaded? Uh, uh, okay, so there's a question. Uh, how do we come to know what are all the default classes? As I've shown you here, if you just say Java dot Lang and the control space, you see all the classes out here. Okay, the other way out, you can directly go to your package explorer. Go to your uh, JRE system libraries and just say uh, Java dot Lang. Where is your Java dot Lang? Okay, this is the one, and you can see there are a lot of classes under that. Okay, you can use all the classes which are present in your this particular package. Okay, so this is the only way you can know. Otherwise, if you want to buy hat, you are you are welcome to do that. But usually, you don't buy hat things. Uh, you just use it. Now, if you see here. Uh, in 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 uh, in most of the uh, programs, I have used a class known as string, right? String uh, name, something like that, right? So from where your string comes into picture? So string is again coming from your, let's see here, uh, A B C D E I J K L M N O P Q R S. Okay. So if you see, the string class is again present in your Java dot Lang package. All right. <clears throat> So there are a lot of other uh, other classes also which will be more handy when you use it uh, sometimes like you will be talking about string buffer we'll talking about uh, string builder and we'll talk about threads uh, and what not okay so there are a couple of classes which we'll be talking about there are still a lot of classes every now and then depends on what kind of functionality you want to use it you can use those things okay all right so let me close this and close this so very big list. Okay. Go back to the navigator here. Right. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have the same uh, functionality. Let me say in the package one, I'm going to create a class, uh, new class uh, calculation. Okay. And uh, that's all. And I'll be having a couple of methods here with your instance variables also. Let's say. Uh, int a okay and I'm just going to say uh, string uh, type whether you want to, you want to do an addition or a, a subtraction and here also let me say int okay let's say here first value and this is your second value and this I'm going to say uh, what type, whether it is uh, addition or subtraction. Okay. And let me have some behaviors. Let's say public uh, void add me. Uh, wherein uh, what am I going to do is I'm going to uh, give an option for this calculation. I can even use a constructor here. So, okay, I'm just going to have this and I'm even going to have a constructor with an argument also. Okay, I'm just going to say int first name, int, sorry, first value, int uh, second value. Okay, so I'm just going to say the same thing for dot first value this dot second value equals to second value pretty plain and simple the same thing we have been doing it from the very previous classes here okay now uh, uh, still what i want to do is i want to say int first value i uh, instead of uh, having it from the constructor i even giving an option to have it from the method signature itself so int second value so what you're going to do is just going to say, let me 
okay let me just have this as a void so if i have a void i just want to say system.out.println here itself okay and i'm just going to say uh, addition value is first value plus second value okay so the same thing uh, see if you can see here uh, uh, the first thing i have given i have not given anything as public uh, private or protected so if i do not give any uh, any modifier here okay we say it as a default modifier okay now what am i going to do is i'm just going to make this as public okay so this is your public now what am i going to do next uh, here the addition method i'm going to make it as a public and your subtraction method i'm going to make it as nothing okay uh now let's see what am i going to do is uh if i create a main class here or a client program here in the same package okay i'll just say client pack 1 in the client pack 1 or what i can do i can just say calculation calc equals to new calculation right and uh, what uh, what i meant by creating an object here because i want to do some addition or subtraction here right so what i'm going to do is first let me invoke uh, add me and let me try accessing your first value second value that you know we can directly access it when you create an instance here right so in your client package 1 i'm just going to say sys out and say calc uh, dot let's say first value right and by default if you are not initializing you will get a value of 0 uh, depending on whether it is an object and you know that if I, this is an object right i mean this is a class if you do not initialize anything with it it is going to be a null here okay and for all this uh, primitive types we say this is a primitive type and we'll be talking about the wrapper type of this also uh, so if for a primitive type it is going to be zero here okay so if i access this one or if i right click run as java application okay i'm going to get a value of zero here right now let me try accessing the uh, other things also now as uh, as you know this is an integer and it is a default modifier uh, this is also default modifier this is a public one so even if i try to access this say here we are completely talking about only how to access things okay we are not at all talking about why this is uh, why you are not accessing your first value why you are not accessing your second value i'm plainly talking about only your public private protected and default one okay uh, so here I'm saying, I'm going to say here sys out and calc dot type here, right? And even if I want to access your add me method, what I can do, I can just say uh, calc dot add me, and I'm just going to give the first value and the second value. Okay. So I gave this and even I can access my subtract me also. So when I say subtract first value minus second value. Okay. And let me just change this. So here I just say calc dot subtract me. So 30 minus 15 okay so right click uh, run as java application you, you 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 guys must be thinking why uh, he's teaching the same old old stuff here right um okay now if you can see this is i have given this as a default i have not given any specifier here this is public and uh, this is default default public so if i'm not giving any specifier we use it as a 
default specifier here okay now uh, come back to this uh, let me take this client pack let me create one more class client class in the package to right now new class so i'll just say again here client pack to now default is not public here okay we'll we'll see that right now uh, there is uh, okay uh, public uh, string you cannot use the default as a keyword right very simple okay what what is my task here i will copy the same uh, main method here okay and i will try to access the same thing from a different classes also right i can do that right because i have uh, no restriction in not to do that now if you see here uh, the same thing i am doing it in the same package i am not getting any compilation error but the same thing which i am doing it from the different package i am getting some kind of compilation issues here what is that compilation issue why i am not getting compilation issues for these two right why i am getting it for this one and this one let's see that so the very first one i say calc dot first value now what is first value let us go there my first value is having a having uh, it doesn't have public private protected so it is having something like here default modifier right d e f a u l t you cannot use it okay but you say it is a default specifier okay uh, uh, so here in this case when you say use a default one you cannot access the default outside the package okay you cannot access the default one outside the package if you see this is default and i'm having a client package to which is outside the package if i would have uh, created a new class here inside this package one I, i i wouldn't have any problems here but i am creating a class in a different package and from different package i am basically trying to use the calculation the very first and foremost thing if you see i am first importing the package because if uh, if you do not import the package it will uh, give a compile time error saying that calculation cannot be resolved to a type very plain and simple so i'm going to undo this and the first thing is i have imported this one okay uh next as we spoke about this is your default now what if i make it as a public here let's go back if you as you know uh, public is uh, by a term when you talk about public it is public to everyone you don't have any problems here in the same package itself let us go back to the second package now when i go back to the second package client package 2 i have no problems here why because i have i have changed the modifier from your default to public right now if you go back uh, see your uh, subtract me the same thing goes here so if i talk about subtract me here it is your default so whenever anything is default you can access it inside the package itself okay you cannot access it outside the package go back to the package to uh, client to here so i cannot access it anyhow all right now let's talk about other specifiers here also so in the calculation uh let's say you have got the first value second value and you have got public here right we we have spoken about public and default now let's talk about something as uh, private okay uh if i make this as private okay so even in the same package also your private value will not be accessed you cannot access the private any variable or method which is private outside the class but somewhere inside the class i can very well use it i can say 
something like we are doing any manipulation inside the class if you can see the first value i'm able to access it here okay so anything as a private you are able to access it inside the class but not outside the class okay so that is what your private is all right now i'm sorry if your grammar is confused about um like if you could when you said public mm -hmm. um initial first where you put an active active into the text to the java class right uh, uh which one which one is that it's a client text to the dot java uh-huh you couldn't access it in the system dot out the print element as first value because you did not specify public but then the same values were accessed in cap cap dot add new where you had the first value and the second value adding to each other so i like how were you able to access it in add new in calc dot add me but not in the system dot out print again you're talking about here calc dot add me here yeah you were able to access the first value yes here, right right yes. even though you have not specified it as public integer first value uh yeah you, that's what i mean see the the highest preference is your private here if you make anything as private you can access it only inside the class itself now if you see add me where is your add me present add me i'm just muting you add me is present inside the class itself inside your calculation class itself okay i'm talking about an instance variable which is inside this class right now when i make it as a public it is accessible to everyone everyone in the sense even though if it is inside the package so this is one client which is inside the package so here i'm able to access my first value okay why because it is public even though i'm able to access it outside the package why because here this one because it is again public all right if i make the same thing as private right i still have the option to access it inside the class itself even though if i say first value or first value anything which is inside the class you have you have defined this methods inside the class itself it is not outside the class but if you see i have already defined the first value as private if i go back to the client package which is outside the class but in the same package you get a compile time error here because you are you are having a private specifier here is it is it clear Yeah, that part is clear. But what I'm confused about is calc dot add me, where twelve is the first value. Are you saying that calc dot add me is accessing? Uh, if yeah. You okay. Okay. Camera? Here you're talking about no, no. Okay. When you say add me here, you are basically pass passing this value twelve to where to your first value. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How are you able to access that as a first value? No, this is your parameters. The parameters you are passing. Oh, there is nothing okay. so to do with the parameters. Okay. So then you are referencing to that uh, the integer first, the int first that you had described in the. Oh, okay, so that's why I got confused. Okay, thank okay. you. This is I could. It need not be first value. You could always specify at anything else. Right? I can specify yeah. here uh, one or two here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's why I got confused. Okay, yeah, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, so I just need to say. to here all right so this is nothing to do with your first value and the second value here yeah so let me even change it here from 1 and 2 1 and 2 here okay so uh, till now we spoke about as we saw uh, this if this is your private you cannot no one can access it okay i will still after this i'll be giving a very uh, uh, in particular an example where to specify what okay but as just a, uh, as a groundwork i'm just giving you all this informations right now okay so uh, when you say private um era yeah the first value is defined as private but still we have set the value the uh, uh, constructor right 
Uh, yes. No, see, I think it's a confusion with the names here. Okay, let me just change this name as uh, one again. Two again. Okay. So my objective is just to have some value. I'm just passing it as an argument. See, these are arguments. Okay, these are not references of this particular instance variables. Okay, so if I try to say calculation here, if I use calculation with some arguments here, it doesn't matter for me, 12 comma 34, right? If I say this is calc two. So what are you passing? Right. You're passing it, passing some, some uh, arguments here. You're not accessing your instance variables. Okay, these variables are different and these, these are different and these are different. So, uh, I understood that part, but I just want to make a statement that we, uh, that's how you protect the uh, the variables, uh, accessing the variables, uh, setting the value, only to a, uh, a, a certain path, like either to a method or a constructor. Uh, yeah, we'll talk next about that. Okay, uh, let me finish a couple of other things. I'll give you one brief example, wherein we'll see what to protect. Okay, we'll see what to hide. Uh, see, hiding is different. Uh, protecting is different. Uh, hide, I, you don't want to show to anyone. Okay, protection. We'll see how we can use it in the in your subclasses and those things. Okay, just give me a few more minutes here. Okay, so let's move on. So we spoke about public. Uh, we spoke about uh, private, and we spoke about default here, right? Uh, Let's uh, have a small hierarchy here. Uh, let me say, okay. Now let me have one more uh, variable as uh, protected uh, string. Uh, let's say, uh, what do we say? Uh, okay, just a protected value here. Protected string. Okay. So I just told uh, protected, okay. Now, now let's see how, in which all levels I can access this one, okay. So if I say something like protected string here, if I say, okay, this is, this is ruled out. Okay, let me just keep it as it is. If I say calc dot protected string in your S is out, I'm able to access that, no problems in that, okay? But the same thing if I do it in my package to, I get a compile time error here, okay? So again, when you talk about protected, you can access inside the package or in the subclasses also, okay? We'll talk about those things right now. All right. So just to remember one thing, uh, whenever you, whenever it is a public, it can be accessed anywhere. Whenever it is a private, it can only be accessed inside the class. Whenever it is a default, it can be accessed. Okay. So if I make this comment here, this is a default modifier and this is only inside the same package okay uh okay something like uh anywhere inside the same package okay so this is only inside the class okay if it is a public anywhere okay if it is a protected uh, anywhere inside the same package and okay and in sub classes which we are going to see it right now okay so uh, let us take a small example here uh, in which i'm going to explain uh, what all variables to make it as public, which one to make it as private, which one to make, make it as a protected here. All right. Uh, 
one quick clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, if you define another package, like say sub pack one inside package one, uh -huh. so still uh, this variable is not visible for sub pack one, right? Right, exactly. So whenever any of the for any of the class belongs to any different package, it doesn't matter here. It's all uh, it's all uh, hidden. It's not visible. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. I think everybody has to think on that. Uh, the same question what uh, Madhu has asked me right now, even though if I say something like uh, right click new uh, package, let's say uh, pack 1.1, one, one, okay? package inside your pack 1.1. One, one, all right. Now, what if I have this client program here? Uh, can I access my first value? Paste it here. Okay, let me make this as 1.1. One, one. Okay, so this is your one one, and this has to be the package name, package value should be your one one here. Okay, and again we have to import it. It doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, as your client package is inside your package one, and your calculation uh, is inside the package one. It doesn't mean that you don't have to import it. Still you have to import it. Okay, so that is your that is compulsory. You have to import anything which is not there in the same package but if it is there in the same package you don't have to import it yes yes uh, a class can also we can we can have that also okay uh, okay so the same thing goes okay uh, did that answer you uh, madhu right yeah good so I'm not interested in this right now because uh, this is again part of a different package. Let me even remove this. Uh, okay. So I'm only interested in about the package one and the package two. So what am I going to do? Let me just comment out this one saying that, uh, is this private? Uh, private, okay. Fields cannot be accessed okay so uh, let us let us uh, talk about an example here uh, wherein i'm going to uh, have a person right so in that particular person i'm going to have uh, right click new class and say it as a person okay and uh, what are the features of a particular person? Let's say this person will uh, have its uh, name, social security, and age. Okay. So string name uh, int ssn. Okay. And uh, let's say int age. So I've got only three uh, features in uh, three three properties in a person, right? So what I can do, I can have uh, each method uh, instead of, uh, okay, let us just keep it as it is, okay? Now, uh, what I want to do is uh, from the same package, okay, I want to create a class here. And usually what happens is you do not uh, act, try to create the client program here itself you basically try to ship your particular class file and somebody else will use your class file and you will never try to use uh, okay we'll do one thing instead of having this here we will talk something about uh, a package access modifier and in that access modifier i'll be having a, a hierarchy known as your uh, person okay so in your access modifier i'm just going to say new package and here i'm just going to say person Okay, so uh, when I talk about a person, I will create a person object, new class person. And if you can see, I have two persons in the different packages. I cannot create person uh, dot Java in the same package again and again. Okay, so let me copy these properties here from here. Copy this and paste it here. And then what am I going to do here? Remove this. Okay, so let us keep your pack one, pack two here as it is. And then uh, let me create a different package. Uh, let's say 
in the access modifier i'm just going to create a new package new package here access modifier dot uh, let's say company okay so a company will uh, hire a person okay but when he hires his person hire a person he uh, needs the name of the person ssn of the person and the age of the person okay so that's what i need basically sorry company okay now right click new class i'm just going to say as a company and let me have a main method here okay so this is just like a client program okay now uh, what this company does is uh, he hires persons okay uh, we can even have a hierarchy here let's say uh, you as a person you have an employee also and that employee is basically going to extend your person here right so what am i going to do is i'm going to create one more package here new uh, package dot employee finish and in that i'm going to create a class known as employee okay so every employee whether he is an employee or whatever it is he is going to have a social security number his age and and uh, his name okay so i created a, a employee here that's all i don't need any kind of main method here and this employee will extend here uh i'm going to extend this with your person okay with person now even if you see here uh it doesn't know who this person is this class belong this class belongs to a package and i have to basically import that particular package so if i just say control shift o it is going to give me some suggestions here so i'm going to access this one here so i imported the package here okay now uh, as uh, as an employee here right as i is extending a person so it it will try to access all its features of a person no doubt about it okay now from the client program let's say i'm going to create an employee and let me have a constructor here and one more constructor let's say i'm just going to say public person and i'm going to create a person with uh okay so i'll i'll do one thing i'll just not have this here and i will have it from the employee so coming on to the employee i'm just going to have a constructor okay i'm just going to have a constructor which is going to initialize all the values of a particular person so i'm just going to say string name comma uh, in age and your int ssn okay so i am just going to say uh, this dot name equals to name this dot age equals to age what happened to this okay so there is uh the field is not visible okay so it, it has already started uh, giving me all the issues here so, okay we'll do one thing we'll yes make it as protected right uh yeah we will talk about those things later okay just just hang on so what am i going to do is i'm just going to have a public person so i'm going to have a constructor here itself and i will say the same thing here copy this and i'll just say the same thing what i have done it here i'll just copy this and paste it here and this dot uh, ssn equals to ssn and from here i'll just call the uh, super okay and in this super i'll just pass on the name age ssn 
okay so i'm good here uh, so uh, i i do not have any access i have any problems right now and uh, what am i going to do next is from your client program i'm going to create an object of an employee and i'm just going to say uh, public void print me and i'm going to print the behavior of the particular employee so i'm just going to say sys out uh name is okay you have some problems here okay we'll do one thing we we'll just push it to the top here we'll not have it here so let's go to the person and push this here plus ssn ssn h h right so as a company what is he going to do is he is going to create an instance of your employee so i'll just say employee uh let's say jira as an employee okay new employee right so i know uh, first of all i need to import this so let me first import this first okay and uh, let me even remove this constructor and uh, i need to create an employee i anyhow uh, as i said in the previous classes uh, whenever you want to create an uh, object of uh, for a particular purpose you want to give some information and so here i just want to create an employee with name intern age sorry name age and social security number so i'm just going to say here as jeram uh, uh, okay so this is your age and ssn number 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay jeram yeah, in this case what is your super class is it employee or uh, company my super class is your person company is not at all a, any kind of class it's just a client program here okay as a company i am creating employees here if you see there is no hierarchy this is just a client program but instead of telling it as a client i have told in specific a, a company okay because a company is the one who is going to hire employees right in practical also all right is 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 that clear uh okay but uh, uh, i i guess you make sense um so what is the super class here then person is the super class yeah for an employee person is the super class okay so we are trying to access a hierarchy here from a client program that is a company uh, from a company program here okay company has nothing to do with your uh, your inheritance and anything as such okay you just uh, a client program wherein you are trying to invoke the functionalities of your employee all right so i am going to create i have created an employee here i created i know that uh, i have created this uh, employee okay so let me go to the ms paint i have created an employee somewhere here right and uh, after creating this employee i do lot of manipulation with that uh, uh, there is one more program is using the same reference here right so i just say a uh, jeram dot uh, print me okay and in the meantime somebody is using uh, the uh, the features of jeram let's say he wants to you want to do some modif uh, sorry let's say you want to do uh, something with the age of that particular employee or the social security number of that employee because uh, you want to check you want to take that social security number and let's say uh, here in the same class i'm just going to have a new method let's say uh, public void um, check ssn so in in your company there is a particular department who is basically going to check the social security details of a particular employee right so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass a person per right so i can even pass a person as a reference also okay so what i am uh, what am i going to do is i am going to say 
so what is this social security number uh, sorry your check ssn number is going to do he is going to say uh, is let's say if uh, the person dot ssn okay well okay we'll do one thing as we will go here go back to the class and for now we will make everything as public here okay we will not keep it as default all right uh, as you know when you make it as a public everything is being accessed by everyone so i'll just say here uh, person dot uh, okay i will take that ssn i'll check if the person dot ssn is greater than uh, 10000 then I'm going to say sys out is a valid SSN. Okay. Otherwise, I will. What I can do is I can make uh, some method call wherein it is going to some, do something with your SSN here. Okay. Now, what's happening here is uh, let's say I have already created an employee. And I'm do, I I call this. Let's say I call your print me. Right click, run as Java application. What happened here? There's some problem. Calculation protected. Okay, let me comment out all these things. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in this file as it is with uh, compile time errors. So you guys have to fix those things as well. Okay. All right. So here. Uh, if you go and see the console here, I, I print when you say print me, obviously in your person method, uh, print me method, you're printing all this information of a particular employee. After printing, what you're doing is you are uh, saying uh, check SSN. Okay, so copy this and push it here and let me make this as a static. Okay, so that I can access it directly from so and so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass this reference to the method here. Okay. I can do it in this way because what I did, I am using a type person here. If you remember in the previous session, we can say person Jeremy equals to new employee also, right? Because you are using your super class reference and you are creating an instance of your subclass. The same thing goes here. Uh, when I use a reference of your super class here, it is something like if you say public void in sorry uh, add let's say for for instance so if you say int and i'm going to pass on in a value of int uh, i so when you call this let me make this as static now so when you call this uh, add so what are you supposed to pass you are supposed to pass an integer itself right the same thing goes here when I have created a method with an argument as person, you can only pass that kind of references in that particular object. Sorry, in that particular method here. Okay, so that is what I'm doing it here. So now the concern is, uh, let me print again, right? So in between print me, print me two, uh, two times, I am doing some social security check here. So right click run as Java application. So he's checking, okay, your social security is greater than uh, 10,000. It's a valid social security number. But your person, like when you, when an employee creates a person here, right? Uh, he has a complete control of a person on what he can do it with this person object, right? So what this company does is, uh, he does some mischievous things. What he does, if your social security number is greater than 10,000, I'm just saying person dot SSN equals to 7890. Now, right click, run as Java application. If you see here, what is happening here? You created a person with a social security number, right? This company is doing some silly check here. If the social security number is greater than 10,000, and he's basically modifying this particular social security number. Does it make sense here? It does not make any sense because you know, once a social security number has been generated, 
you will never regenerate your social security number. If are everyone with me? Did you guys see a flaw in this in this piece of code that I am giving an access to the social security number to the out, outside world? When I talk about outside world, anything apart from your class, because your company as a company he's using, he's creating an object, he's creating an instance, he's creating a person. After creating a person, he is having the access to change the social security number of that person. If you guys uh, understood until here, can you just uh, you guys uh, ping me yes or a smiley, whatever it is. That's all. I got only four, five. Okay. Anyways, now. Uh, uh Jerome, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Uh, person for person is like a variable, like string or integer. Person is of P E R is of a type data type of type person here. It is a person. Is a it is of type. type. Yeah, every class is of kind of data type also, right? When you say int i, i is of type data type of integer, right? So when you say string, yeah, I is a type of integer. When you say string name, what is what is name? It is of type string. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, the so person. When you say per person is, P E R, what is P E R? It is of type person. Okay, yeah, but that's what I know. Like integer is numbers, mm -hmm. the string is like alphabet. What is person? What is string? Come again. The string is more like string of characters, like uh, alphabet. Uh, it's again, numbers. it's again a class. It's if you see, open the string. It is again a class. Ah, okay. okay. okay, okay, okay. So every class you can use it kind of a data type also. The so person itself is a inbuilt class for Java. Is that no, 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 no. You can create your own class and make that as a type of a kind kind of a data type here. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. I see. So you pick that class person that Java. I got it. Okay. All right. The same thing. I mean, when you say uh, person J Ram, what is this? It is of type person, right? Okay. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, you what you are what you're doing is I understand, but when you say that uh, this is a silly thing and the access is being given to the outside world, mm -hmm. what is that? Could you please explain? Uh, okay, so when I say uh, access is given to the outside world, I'm talking about this particular property here, which I'm going to say next. Okay, so just stay tuned here. I'm going to explain everything here. So when I say it is a silly thing, access is given to the outside world. That means who is this company? This is a outside world for me because this company is actually creating a person object here. Okay. So any program which is using this particular class employee, he is an outside person for me. Okay. Or a outside class or a class Apart from the same package or the same hierarchy, he's using this person here. Okay. Now, when I say print me, you see, I'm printing this. Again, I'm printing this. And the moment I print again, I'm getting the social security number as 7890. Right. So, who is doing some changes? Your social security number. Person.ssn is doing some, those changes. Now, what am I going to do next? I'm going to hide this information because I don't want anyone to I don't don't want anyone to do any modification with the social security number. They can access the values, but they cannot modify the values. Okay, let's go back to the social security number. What am I going to do? I'm going to make this as private. Okay, the same thing goes for your name also. Whenever you create an employee, you're not supposed to change the name. Changes to private as well. Okay. Now, what is public? Your age is only public. So, what am I going to do right now? I'm going to ins now. How do I access my social security number here? Because whatever the thing is, I have to check the social security number here. Because my my main purpose of this particular method is to check the social security number. I want to print something out here. Correct. But I'm not supposed to do this functionality here at all. Comment this out. First of all, because I have given the access for that reason, 
this uh, company class is basically misusing that particular social security number. Now I have made this as a private here. Now no one can access it. But if no one can access it, how can I give, how can uh, this check person can get the access to your uh, SSN number? What am I going to do is I'm going to introduce a setter and getter for each and every property. Okay. Uh, I think Keith, this was your uh, long back question. Uh, why don't you talk about setters, getters and stuff and all. So it is going to be answered here. Okay. Uh, there is always a reason whenever I keep quiet, I don't give answers. So there is always a reason behind that. All right. So what am I going to do? Uh, right click. So there is an option. I can even write it by myself. Instead of that, I'm just going to right click on this and uh, right click on this class source generate getter and setter. So I'm just going to say H this and this. So everything has it got its own get name, get age, set name, set age, set SSN, get SSN. Say OK. Right. So what did I do? I have created the proper uh, the the uh, getters and setters for each property in the person class. All right. So and, and moreover, this is the way you basically access a variable. OK, you do not give an access to the variable directly. Instead, you give an access to the variable using a setters and getters here. Right now. I have got getter. Let's again talk about social security number. OK, see uh, the social security number and the string both belongs to the same thing because I cannot change the social security number. I should not even change the name also here. OK, but I have just given here. Uh, but if I talk about this, you should understand the same property. Go, should go to your name also here. So let me go back and uh, go to the company program again. So I created a person with this, this and this. Say print me. So this print me is going to say name, age and uh, SSN. Well and good. I'm going to call this one again. Check SSN. I'm going to pass the reference of your employee object. And then it comes here. On this person, I'm going to say person dot. Instead of dot SSN, I can directly say get SSN. Right? Now when I say get SSN, what is it returning? It is basically re uh, returning your this particular class SSN number itself. Okay? So that is what it does. I can even say this also it doesn't matter to be more specific. Okay. So I, I say when I say get SSN, it says this particular class, the, the, the SSN which you have created, it is returning you that particular SSN. And you are doing some validation. Right click, run as Java application. Right. The same thing goes, but I still have the access to change the value. I say person dot set SSN and I'll say the same junk value 7890 7890 run this again the same problem here what to do now now I know that I first of all I have made this as a private that's well and good but still I have the access to set the value of that particular particular SSN to something else. So what am I going to do? I am going to restrict this setter method here. So I'm going to delete the set setter method. The same thing goes for your set name also. So once created, it will you, you will never change those values. Now let's come here. You have no option for a particular variable to be changed by the outside class. So right click run as Java application. You are well and good. There is no chance for you to change the property of your person class. That is your name and SSN here, right? Now for that reason, I have only given a get name and get SSN, but for age, why have given it as a public? Okay. Usually, uh, whenever you create a class, you always make the variables as private. Okay, because here uh, I will never ever say something like person dot if I make this as a public. Okay, let me revert it back to public here. 
it, it's not a good practice to say person dot h. Okay, I can even do it in this way, person dot h basically. All right. So it's not a good practice to do it in this way. So for that reason, you always make this as a private and always try to access all the instance variable using your getters and setters here. Now, why did I make, uh, why did I give an access to the uh, outset program to set the value? Because uh, the company has created an object here of type Jeram here, right? And uh, after one year, uh, it has basically, uh, the age has been increased, right? So on that particular JRAM, he's going to say set age equals to uh, JRAM dot get age plus one, right? Now, after one year, again, if I just print this one here, what am I going to do? Right click, run as Java application. So age was 30, after one year, one method got invoked here and now the age is 31 okay so what did we learn what did we learn here when we spoke about a person we spoke about when you make it as a public you can access it but usually you won't make that as a public always whenever you talk about an instance variable you always make it as a public a private here and we are going to make all these methods as public okay public public so that you can access it but only if, uh, for the particular variables what you can use it so this is always your getters this is always your getters and setters okay so i'll keep the class here in the next session we'll speak about uh, what is a protected okay uh, how we can use protected and we'll see some more examples if time permits okay and try to clear up all the complete uh, concept here and we'll then proceed further okay Any questions? Uh, I'll push on some assignments uh, this weekend. So you guys can do it on Monday itself. Sorry, on, on Sunday. Okay. And I think you guys know the link for the assignment. Uh, I have already given it to you guys. Okay, um, one sec. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this particular link. You guys can get your assignments in your link in this particular link itself. All right. So every every now and then you guys can access this link and see that. And uh, last but not the least please fill in your feedback form as well. Yep. Jairam, this is Florence. Yeah, Florence. Yeah, um, actually, I just wanted to know if I can access the uh, private uh, variables using constructors instead of the getters and setters. Uh, you cannot ac access those things as well. You cannot access these variables anyhow. Only with the help of getters and setters you can do it. So you can't even do constructors? No, constructor is only for initializing things. Okay, oh, you can okay. pass on the pa pass on as a as an argument, but you cannot access those things. I mean, there is okay. no concept as access. Ac I mean, accessing using constructor. Constructor is entirely a different uh, story here at all. We should not even link your constructors here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a question. I mean, uh, are we expected to fill in the feedback every day? I fill twice. It's okay. No, you don't have to fill in every day. I mean, I just, uh, uh, you can do it on your alternative days or if you feel uh, I'm not teaching well, then you can just put your feedback form. This is only to keep you handy. And if you feel someday uh, that I'm, I'm exceeding my, exceeding your expectations, then you guys can even fill in the feedback form as well. So this will uh, boost me sometime this will uh, alert me sometime okay this will not negate me so i'm using two words uh, boost me sometimes and it will alert me sometimes okay sometimes i might not be much effective uh, due to xyz h2k emphasis
provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.